Riptide by Francis Ward Dweller, illustrated by Robert J. Blake. Zachary lived in a Cape Cod house which had pine woods for a comforter and shingles bleached the driftwood by the sea. It was only a salt marsh and three sand dunes from the great ocean beach, but a long way from the village. So Zachary wished he had a dog for company. A cuddly pup that lick was what he wanted. His father brought a golden ball of fur as warm and soft as Zachary's dream. He needs a hug, Zach's father said and then he needs a name. <coughs> they called him Rip, Riptide Wing Jammer, not Scout or Pal or any of the plain old names for dogs they knew. Riptide for a current that runs out to sea when sunbursts crumble. Wing Jammer for a ship that runs before the wind. They didn't know he'd live up to his name. They didn't know the sea would call to Rip as it calls fishermen and sailors, surfers and sunbathers. The ocean always drummed Pied Piper songs for Zack's dog Rip. For just one summer, Riptide followed Zack's small surfboard and learned the trick ways of currents racing round the sandbars. But by September, he was off on business of his own. All day, he'd run for miles along the beach and then swim back as many miles to where the path for home began. He wants to be a dolphin, Zachary's father said. See how he dives into a long-haired wave, comes up and dives again. But Zachary thought Rip wants to be the wind. He's like the wind, the way he races down the shore and rides the sea. Zach still wished Rip would lick and guard the apple stand in fall and chase his wiffle balls in spring. Instead, year-round Riptide patrolled the beach even when ice piled up along the sand and only huddled gulls were there to see him running by. And worst of all was summer when Rip wanted more than running free to be a picnicker, a surfer, even a lifeguard, herding toddlers in the shallows just like a ship dog with new lambs. Rip couldn't read the big clear sign that said, no dogs on Nosset Beach. So when the beach patrol went after him with whistles and their walkie-talkies, Rip thought there surely must be some mistake. At first, he simply paid them no attention and then he learned a dozen new scapes. The gray-haired tower of a man who wore a badge and nameplate Nick had eyes that swept the beach and didn't miss a thing. I'll chase that rascal from here to Halifax if I have to, Zack heard him tell the lifeguards. Rip wasn't very old when Zack was called one day to fetch him and found him giving a small boy a ride. The child let Rip's tail go and splashed toward deeper water. Rip spun and leaped behind him, barking warnings. <coughs> you hear that raucous son? Nick frowned at Zachary. Your riptide seems to think he has to guard this beach. We've eaten guards already. Keep him home. And so they tried. Zach's father took him to the barber shop where conversation crackled and there were pats aplenty, but Rip looked bored and moaned beside the door. Zack and his mother popped Rip in their truck and drove to Halifax for corn and let the wind whip his ears out like flags. He's just pretending it's the beach, thought Zachary. No sooner was the corn hipped on the stand than Rip was gone again. There never was a doubt the beach was where they'd find him. The phone calls kept repeating, Come get Rip! And on the beach, Rip led his chasers first one way and then another. 
He swam and ran, and moved and ran, made friends and ran. When chasers came too close, he swam to sea and down the beach for home. Just like the wind, he never could be caught. As summer followed summer, Nick seemed to watch Rip with a growing twinkle in his eyes, and everyone began to feel that Rip belonged. Then came an August day when Zachary headed for the beach. The week's first sunshine warmed the footbridge through the marsh. Zach's bare feet thudded on the boards. Echoed the waves still drumming from a storm. Somewhere far off, a gull or siren cried. <coughs> Zack wondered where Rip was this shiny day. And then a flock of sirens wailed beyond the dunes and Zack began to run. <coughs> the beach was not its usual Mary's Prawl. Tens knots of people hovered at the water's edge. Lifeguards charged through the surf with ropes and boards and buoys to reach a chain of swimmers drifting out to sea. It was a real riptide caused by the passing storm. And where was Rip? Zack spied him standing at attention, gazing out to sea. Then Riptide ran down the dune and bolted for an open stretch of swells. No, Rip! yelled Zachary. Come back! Instead, Rip burst into the water, battling waves that buried him and tried to drive him back. Riptide Wing Jammer had a mission of his own. Beyond him, Zachary saw a single head. Rip circled and two hands that beckoned Rich to grab his tail. Zachary stood breathless at the water's edge, and Rip, towing the girl behind him, swam for shore the way he always did, with no mistake. Zach is lost in ankle dip, but Nick waded out beyond him and snatched up the girl before a wave scar caught her. It seems he called to Zachary as he carried her to shore. Your rascal rip has saved a life. But then a waterfall of wave cascaded down on Rip. He clawed for footing in the shallows, but backwash dragged him out into the undertow. Zack yelled, he's sliding toward the rip. Can't someone get him? It seemed Rip paddled with a purpose, but he was being carried out to sea. For as he struck the sea-bound current, he sailed out still faster like a gull upon the wind. Turn! Zack shouted, but Rip sailed out till Zack could barely tell his dog from sky and water. He doesn't seem scared, murmured Zack. That is his world, Nick said, and swinging up his binoculars, he gave a cheer. All right, he's veering, swimming down the beach. Then pushing back his cap, Nick chuckled and shook his head. Looks like he really is my 19th guard, he said. So, for the thousandth time, Rip swam for home. Zack strained to watch him in the dazzle of the sea. Then Zack began to run. He'd meet Rip down the beach and walk him home. The beach patrol never chased Rip again. The lifeguards let him join their drills, and as he aged, they drove him home for supper. And Zachary was content when Rip dug canyons at the ocean's edge, ran wind sprints with the guards, and rode out to the end of land in Nick's old jeep. For now, Zach knew what Rip had always known. Rip was the 19th guard, as restless and as constant as the wind. His place was on the beach. There wouldn't ever be another like him.